Good morning and welcome to Mass at St John's Cleveland. Welcome to those of you joining us from home or will, welcome, or will join us later in the day. Today we anticipate Sunday's readings in the Book of Common Prayer, which is the 24th Sunday after Trinity in this prayer book on page 195. Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offences, that through thy bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the bands of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour. Amen. The epistle is taken from the epistle of Paul to the Colossians. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in, in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day we heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being faithful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Here endeth the epistle. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of that according to St. Matthew beginning at the 18th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. While Jesus spake these things unto John's disciples, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. 
but come lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. They laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in, took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and said is on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our reading from St Matthew's Gospel this morning, we meet two people, two people who were desperate. They were in need of healing. Very different. But they had one thing in common. Both were hurting. The first, St Luke's version of the story, tells us he is called Jairus, had a daughter who was ill, who he thought was dead. And he was frantic, frantic enough to approach Jesus, who was already being condemned by other Jewish leaders as a fraud. And the second, the woman who was bleeding, so was considered unclean. She was socially ostracized. But both trusted, they trusted Christ. And because they trusted, he met their needs. Two people with two problems both very serious in their own way. And Jesus was concerned with both problems, for he is concerned with all our worries, both big and small. Jairus' daughter was, was dead, dying. This was major, this was big, this was painful. And Jesus was hurrying to be by her side, but still he stopped to assist the nameless woman and she found out that Jesus cares for every person, every person in the crowd. 
no matter what their status, no matter what their need. She reached out to Jesus and she touched him because it was a common belief at the time that when the Messiah came, he would have healing powers in the very tassels of his robe. Jesus points out that this woman's act was an act of faith and her recognition that he was the Messiah. Perhaps that's why Jesus commended her on her faith. When she touched him, she was healed. We too can be part of the crowd, but never get any blessing from being near Jesus. Some have been to church their entire lives and have never touched Jesus, nor been touched by him. So I encourage you not just to be here, but to reach out, to touch Jesus, for he responds to the touch at the hem of his garment. He knows that it is a touch of faith. The woman tried to do what she did privately, but Jesus was having none of that. He made it into a public event. He didn't want to embarrass her, but there are four reasons why it had to be public. First, he wanted the relationship to be personal, not just a nameless act. Secondly, he wanted faith to be in him, not in his robe, in him. And thirdly, Jesus wanted to, everyone to know the power of God. Fourth, a reason so often overlooked is that Jesus dealt with her publicly, not only for her sake, but for the sake of Jairus. His daughter was close to death or was dead, and he needed all the encouragement he could get. When Jesus arrived at the girl's bedside, he saw the mourners and he told them, oh, stop it, stop wailing. She's not dead, but asleep. Death is often referred to in the Bible as asleep. But when Jesus said this, they, they all laughed. They laughed him to scorn. And there will always be some who will laugh at you, who will laugh you to scorn for believing in eternal life and in a resurrection. But the day will come when our faith will be proved right to even the most intransigent of doubters. We will rise again. At death we will know there is a heaven, or perhaps a hell. Now there are two lessons to learn from all of this. The first one is this, reach out to Jesus even through the crowd. Sometimes there may be a crowd that prevents you from coming to Jesus. Maybe that crowd may be your friends. Maybe it's even the church. But whatever the obstacles, reach out to the Lord. The second lesson is this, keep trusting. Keep trusting even through disaster. Jairus' situation seemed to be as bad as it could get. But place your trust in Christ and things may get worse. You might not get better. Your loved one may still die. But God will be with you, will strengthen you, will uphold you and will see you through. So what is the word from the Lord today? It's best summed up like this in the words of, of St. John's Gospel one of the comfortable words that we hear every Book of Common Prayer Mass. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
as this water is mingled with this wine, so Christ shed our humanity, may we so share the life of his divinity. Wash me truly from my sins, O Lord, and cleanse me from all iniquity. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love we beseech thee also to save and defend all christian kings princes and governors especially thy servant charles our king that under him we may be godly and quietly governed and grant unto his whole council and to all those who are put in authority under him that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to come and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that are truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us 
have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits of the death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, 
we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corpus in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue to in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory, O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. What sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.